When you think about the world's most powerful warships, you probably imagine them dominating the seas with unstoppable force. But there's one enemy that even the mightiest aircraft carrier must respect, Mother Nature herself. When these floating cities encounter monster storms with waves towering six stories high and winds screaming at over 100 miles per hour, the battle for survival becomes very real. Today, we're diving deep into what actually happens when aircraft carriers go head-to-head -head with the deadliest storms on Earth. Our first modern example takes us to July 8, 2022, when the USS Harry S. Truman was operating in the Mediterranean Sea. The Norfolk-based carrier was conducting a routine replenishment at sea operation, transferring supplies from support vessels in what should have been a straightforward procedure. But then something unexpected happened. The carrier was suddenly hit by intense winds and heavy rain that forecasters hadn't anticipated. What happened next shocked the Navy community. An F-A-18 Super Hornet fighter jet, weighing more than 32,000 pounds and capable of flying faster than the speed of sound, was literally blown off the carrier's flight deck and into the Mediterranean Sea. This wasn't during flight operations. The aircraft was parked on deck and the violent weather simply picked it up and threw it overboard like a piece of paper. This incident raises a critical question, how is this even possible? Navy carriers have strict procedures for heavy weather. Aircraft are supposed to be chained down with steel cables and nylon straps to prevent exactly this scenario. Carrier crews include specially trained aerographers' mates who constantly monitor weather conditions and predict dangerous weather hours in advance. But here's what went wrong. Computer weather models from that week showed signs of brutal conditions developing. A strong cold front was sweeping across Italy and the Ionian Sea from the north, ending a record-breaking heat wave. Ocean waves were building to 8 feet, and most importantly, there was an intense zone of low pressure and cold air at high altitudes passing over abnormally warm sea surface temperatures. This temperature contrast created an exceptionally unstable atmosphere, perfect for generating thunderstorms with violent downward blasts of wind. The forecasted weather wasn't expected to impact the replenishment operation, but nature had other plans. One sailor was injured during the unexpected heavy weather and had to receive medical attention, though fortunately, they were expected to make a full recovery. The Navy later recovered the Super Hornet from 9 to 500 feet under the Mediterranean Sea but the incident highlighted just how quickly conditions can deteriorate even for modern carriers with advanced weather prediction systems. Aviation experts called the incident at least bizarre, noting that aircraft shouldn't be blown off the deck by weather. The fact that it happened demonstrates the raw power of extreme weather and how even the most prepared crews can be caught off guard when atmospheric conditions turn violent without warning. The USS Gerald R. Ford is the world's largest and most technologically advanced aircraft carrier. At 1,100 feet long and displacing nearly 100,000 tons, this nuclear-powered behemoth represents the cutting edge of naval engineering. In 2022, during a training exercise in the Atlantic Ocean, the Ford encountered conditions that would put its advanced systems to the ultimate test. The carrier hit an extreme sea state with significant wave heights that resulted in serious rolling. For a ship of this size, any noticeable roll is concerning. The massive waves caused the deck to pitch wildly, rising and falling dozens of feet in seconds. Imagine being on the flight deck when a 60-foot wave hits the bow at highway speed. The impact generates the same force as a high-speed car crash, except the car weighs 100,000 tons. Tons of seawater explode over the flight deck, and the entire ship shudders from the impact. But here's where modern technology makes the difference. The USS Gerald R. Ford is equipped with some of the most advanced stabilization systems ever installed on a warship. The ship's computer systems receive real-time information from onboard gyroscopes about its position in three-dimensional space. This data feeds into active stabilization systems that make precise adjustments to keep the ship as steady as possible in rough seas. Despite the tumultuous conditions, the Ford structure withstood the loads without sustaining damage to the aircraft on deck or the ship itself. This wasn't luck. The carrier incorporates high-strength materials and optimized hydrodynamics in its hull design. The ship's hull is designed to displace massive amounts of water, and engineers deliberately placed heavy machinery and fuel tanks low in the ship to keep its center of gravity as low as possible, improving stability. During the 2022 incident, the effectiveness of these systems was dramatically proven. The carrier maintained operational capability throughout the storm, 
demonstrating that modern engineering can create vessels capable of surviving conditions that would have devastated earlier generation ships. However, even the Ford's commanding officer noted that the physical demands on the crew during storm operations are extreme, with personnel fighting to maintain control of their stations while being thrown around by violent ship motion. To understand just how far carrier storm survival has come, we need to look back at June 5, 1945, when Typhoon Connie slammed into Admiral William Bull Halsey's 5th Fleet southeast of Okinawa. This wasn't Halsey's first rodeo with a killer typhoon. Just six months earlier, Typhoon Cobra had killed 790 sailors and sank three destroyers from his fleet. Now history was repeating itself with terrifying consequences. The Fleet Weather Center on Guam had notified Halsey's task force about the storm to their south. But despite his previous experience and attempts to maneuver his 76 ships away from danger, the Admiral inadvertently sailed them directly into the typhoon's path. What happened next became one of the most dramatic demonstrations of a storm's power to devastate even the mightiest warships. Just before daybreak on June 5th, the carrier USS Hornet was recording steady winds at 100 knots with gusts up to 120 knots. That sustained winds of 115 miles per hour with gusts reaching 138 miles per hour, equivalent to a Category 4 hurricane. The seas were described as having steady mountainous pyramidal parallel waves exceeding 60 feet from crest to trough. One escort carrier reported riding over the granddaddy of all waves. Then the unthinkable happened. Both USS Hornet and USS Bennington experienced complete structural failure of their forward flight decks. The leading 24 feet of the flight decks on both carriers literally collapsed over their bows. These weren't minor bends or dents. The flight deck plating was torn away, bent downward over the bow, and essentially destroyed. The massive steel structures that these aircraft were supposed to take off from simply buckled under the relentless pounding of the storm. An eyewitness from the USS Bennington described the terror of that morning. The ship was being tossed around like a matchbox, and to prevent capsizing, the crew had to run the starboard engines full astern while running the port engines full ahead simultaneously, just to keep the island pointed into the wind. The stress and vibrations in the engine room were so extreme it felt like standing on a vibrating machine. One crew member watching from the deck described seeing their great big ship was no more than a peanut shell in that big storm. The heavy cruiser USS Pittsburgh suffered even more spectacular damage. At approximately 6.33 in the morning, after being hit by two massive waves in succession, over 100 feet of the cruiser's bow simply broke off and fell away from the ship. The bow section continued to float independently and was later nicknamed McKeesport after a suburb of Pittsburgh, remarkably because the crew had closed all watertight bulkheads and gone to battle stations as a precaution, no lives were lost in the incident. The ship was able to ride out the rest of the storm by keeping its stern pointed into the wind. In total, Typhoon Connie damaged 33 ships, destroyed or damaged 125 aircraft aboard the carriers, and killed six sailors. Understanding what makes storms so dangerous for aircraft carriers requires looking at the physics involved. When a carrier traveling at 30 plus knots hits a 60-foot wave, the impact force is astronomical. Modern carriers are designed with knife-like bows that cut through waves rather than riding over them. At high speed, this means the bow slices into wave faces, sending tons of green water cascading over the flight deck in a phenomenon called taking water over the bow. Today's aircraft carriers survive monster storms through a combination of advanced engineering, satellite technology, and intensive crew training. Modern carriers use two different stabilization modes depending on sea conditions. In normal weather, the system stabilizes the glide path to a fixed point in space. But during storms, it switches to a mode that compensates for the ship's violent motion, giving pilots a stable visual reference even when the deck is being pounded by massive waves. Advanced weather routing systems help navigation teams find the safest paths through dangerous weather. These computers can process thousands of weather data points and predict wave conditions hours in advance, allowing crews to maintain operational speed while avoiding the worst conditions. The Navy's NEP2 weather prediction system, which received a $23.5 million upgrade in 2025, uses cutting-edge modeling to deliver unparalleled weather forecasts for military operations. Crew training is equally critical. Every aircraft carrier crew trains extensively for high-speed heavy weather operations using advanced simulators that can reproduce the exact conditions of racing through 60-foot waves while conducting flight operations. 
Visibility can drop to a quarter mile or less as wind-whipped spray fills the air. The psychological impact of being in a storm where the separation of sea and sky reportedly disappeared is profound. So what happens when aircraft carriers go into monster storms? The answer is complex. Modern carriers like the USS Gerald R. Ford can survive conditions that would have destroyed earlier ships thanks to advanced engineering, active stabilization systems, and rigorous crew training. But nature still holds tremendous power, as demonstrated by the USS Harry S. Truman incident in 2022, when unexpected weather literally blew a fighter jet off the deck. Modern carriers will continue to encounter severe storms as long as they operate on the world's oceans. Let me know what you guys think about this, and subscribe to Shipline for more news and updates.